Right. So the 100% hit is because it's coming from a reference gene and you expect it to be there. All of these very have a very high 99.3 or 99.5% I mean there's very little base changes that it goes to a different species and then it comes back to altitudinous can mean one of two things. Either altitudinous is actually the same as these other bacillus and they've been incorrectly classified or you've got what's called horizontal gene transfer. So this is a plasmid that has gone between different species. So they're sharing very closely related examples. So what you would need to do is an evolutionary tree of other genes from those species and see if they give you exactly the same shape of evolutionary tree to the one you get for this particular gene. If they don't, then you've got what we call horizontal gene transfer. In viruses, uh, in flu, where you have segmented viruses, that's when you've got reassortment. When your virus changes part of it to having a part from a different subtype of flu. Uh, most of those 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, do we have a shelf? Right, suddenly we start dropping off and we're definitely finding different species. So this is, this doesn't sound very nice. You don't probably want to have this. Bacillus amyloliquefaciens doesn't sound like it's going to be good for you. Bacillus serious subtilis subtilis and another one knows liquefaciens. Now to tell you if you've got a good hit you can look at the identity. You can also look at this E score. So this is like p-value in statistics. It's the expected chance of that alignment occurring at random. So it's zero. It's such a small number, it doesn't matter. By the time you get down to 80%, it's still 1.2 times 10 to the minus 82. So that means 0, 0, 0.0, 81 other zeros, and then 1, 2. It's a very small probability that's not happening by chance in the history of the universe. But you have to watch these two things. So what generally we do is consider everything that's reasonable. Uh, so everything is considered identical and al worth aligning that it's the same gene. If you're going all the way down to 10 to the minus 10 on in the E values, once you get above that, then it's a bit questionable. As I said, you can do, if I go all the way through this and do a thousand, so I'm still on 10 to the minus 40s, um, 30s, I'm still in bacteria, I'm still in entire genomes, they're not telling me what it's doing. So it's minus 33. 27, 26, 24, 22. All of these are perfectly exactly the same. They're still 84% identical in DNA. So I get to the end of my 1,000 in my search and I still haven't managed to find something that's different. So I still haven't found everything that's pretty much identical in the database. And I'm still got a probability of this arising by chance of naught with point twenty zeros and a five two on the end. Interesting that there's some at the bottom that are coming from patents. So somebody's obviously decided that they're going to use this particular uh, sequence for some particular purpose. So it might be interesting to have a look what that patent is because it might tell you what it's doing or it might not. Yeah, well, okay, I want to see the patent. <sighs> no, show me the publication. Process for the production of fine chemicals. <laughs> it means that they're taking that thing they're producing a and protein out of it, an enzyme, and they're using it for biosynthesis. 
So that's what the lab where I did my PhD, that's what we did. We identified genes and proteins that could be used for doing chemical synthesis and what's called biotransformations. As I said, enzymatic washing powders is a typical example. And Nova Nordisk, who's the leading company in doing that, uh, creating those enzymes, make an absolute fortune out of creating en designer enzymes to do specific things. They also grew insulin, artificial insulin. It's another of their products. Right. So it's a pain. If I click on any of these entries, all I do is go to another entry, which if I view it as faster, it's just the entire genome of a bacteria. This is as useful as a chocolate teapot. If I'm searching through something in the databases, I don't want to do that. So the first thing I would really suggest doing when you've got sequences like that is Turn it into protein and search for a protein against the database. Then you'll get something at least semi-useful. <sighs> but anyway, 